Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Ball here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and I am back with you a second time because this is my second time recording this, and my laptop crashed on the last slide the last time through. So we're going to do all this again, probably a little bit more efficiently this time, and like I actually have my shit together because I actually kind of practiced once. All right, so we got a new Battle Scroll, Battle Scroll Gallet. There is some controversy over how that is pronounced, and I am going to insist that the British pronounce everything wrong. So even if it was supposed to be galet, as some claim, that is a French word, the British hate the French and intentionally mispronounce their words. It's galet. Anyway, they have given us in the article that came along with this Battle Scroll update a little bit of outset of their intentions, uh, and you can read all of that here. I've taken the snips from the article. Basically, they are saying outright that they want to target a 45 to 55% win rate for every army, faction, all of those things. So they have identified, you know, Stormcast Eternals, Living City, Seraphon Coalesce, Legion of the First Prince, all things that need to come down a notch, and Heated Knights of Slanesh, Blades of Corn, Cruel Boys, Bone Splitters, Gloom Spike Gits, Flesh Eater Quartz, and Ossiarch Bone Reapers uh, to get some buffs. And they are keeping their eyes on Sons of Bayamat, Fire Slayers, Beasts of Chaos, and Maggot Kin of Nurgle. Uh, they're not making any changes at this time, but they're they're paying attention. Uh, Magikin have definitely been doing well in tournaments recently. Uh, they kind of took a little bit to kind of catch on and people to figure out what was good in that book bef uh, before it actually started doing that well in tournaments. So it's actually kind of a recent development that has been doing really well. Beasts of Chaos, they just got a really big update in uh, White Dwarf and this new battle pack that we're getting uh, with the new General's Handbook. It looks like it's going to benefit Beasts of Chaos quite a bit. As well as Fire Slayers, uh, they recently got a new book, but uh, have not been doing especially well, partly because it's an ugly-ass army without a lot of unit selection, and people really don't like it for aesthetic reasons and a variety of other reasons. Um, I, I, whatever. Uh, and Sons of Bamat, I mean, their win rate is still high, but it, it's been slowly declining pretty much ever since the book came out. And now that we're moving out of Battle Pack Monsters into Battle Pack Infantry, the all-monster army might not be anywhere near as good as it used to be. So, with that said, let's take a look at the current stats. From AOS Stat Center, this is where we currently sit uh, ever since the start of Age of Sigmar 3rd edition, about a year ago. Uh, we've got four armies that are over that magic 55% win rate. Legion of the First Prince, Seraphon, Sons of Amat, and Daughters of Cain. Uh, Legion of the First Prince and Seraphon, they identified as things that they are going to nerf, and we'll see that uh in later slides, Sons of Bayamat, they are watching. Um, that one is kind of circling the drain at this point. Daughters of Cain, uh, they got a book pretty recently, and you know they probably should have said they're watching this too because they should really just admit to themselves that they, you know, the problem things in that book didn't get changed, and it, it's going to continue to be really good. Like they. It, they created better internal balance by improving the things that people weren't playing. So instead of having uh, a book that has better external balance, it has a more internal balance that just raised up the bottom. So now they have more tools to beat you over the head with and more choices to beat you over the head with. Anyway, uh, things down on the bottom below 45%. Bone Reapers, Fire Slayers, Corn, Sylvaneth, Night Haunt, Skaven, Cruel Boys, Slanesh, and Gits. Uh, now, if we break this down, uh, Bone Reapers getting a buff, Fire Slayers on the watch list, they're on the line at 44%. Um, and this uh, new battle pack coming out uh, should benefit them quite a bit. 
Corn getting a buff, Sylvaneth getting a new book this weekend, Night Haunt just got a new book, so these numbers are outdated, Skaven getting a new book this weekend, um, Cruel Boys, Slanesh, and Gits all getting buffs in this battle pack. I'm sorry, not battle pack, battle scroll. Too many similar words. Anyway, so this sort of sets out our expectations, but uh, let's bear in mind that this is win rates that are a composite over the last 12 months and are not necessarily representative of what's been happening more recently. Um, and I think Games Workshop is kind of looking at that. Like you'll see here, like Magakin of Nurgle, 52% win rate. But if you look at, you know, podiums in the last three months, they've been all over the place. So, uh, you know, and then they also identified uh, Stormcast Eternals and Cities of Sigmar as needing changes, both of those sitting at 49% win rates. Um, you would think based on that that they don't need a change, but they definitely do. Um, both of those armies have some problems with the scope of players compared to what skilled players are able to do with them. Um, anyway, let's move on to order. Grand Alliance Order, what got changed? Stormcast Eternals get nerfed twice. Uh, Thunderbolt Volley, this is their once per battle command ability to uh, shoot in the hero phase. Basically, this just got changed so that you cannot target a reinforced unit with it. Now, typically, this was targeting a unit of 15 Judicators or uh, six long strikes. In either case, them not being reinforced significantly drops their power. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think this was a good change, actually. Like, this is this seems like what it needed to be. Like, your incentive is to run, like, six packs of Judicators. Or I'm sorry, six packs of Long Strikes and 15 packs of Judicators. But not being able to shoot twice with them now you need to spread them out like you definitely like a unit of five judicators shooting once in the hero phase is kind of stupid and you know a, a unit of three long strikes isn't much better storm drake guard uh they basically just lost their hero phase move um you know i, I think there's still issues with that scroll. Like it's still just really powerful. Um, so I, I think overall it, it also needs a points increase. And I, I'm betting you guys could probably hear my dog on me snoring right now. Um, I hope that's not too disturbing for anybody. I really don't want to disturb him. Um, so yeah, uh, this is what we got for Stormcast Eternals. Two, I think, solid moves. The Storm Drake Guard, I think, could use a little bit more, though. And I, I think that's mostly a points issue at this point. Living City, they finally fixed Strike and Melt Away so that it does what it says in the name. You have to hit, and then you can move, but it can't be any closer to any enemy models anymore. Um, what everybody was doing was taking Storm Drake Guard or Fulminators, and using the Hidden Paths ability in Living City to, you know, ambush those on the side of the board, nine inches away from the enemy. They have a shooting attack that is uh, greater than nine inches, so they can just shoot in the shooting phase, then activate this command ability, and then they would move up and have a three-inch charge, and, you know, and there you have it. Um, this like moves this back into what the intent of strike and melt away obviously was from the minute this like book dropped and you know we all knew it was supposed to work that way but games workshop forgot to tell us that for a couple of years and now they finally fixed it and now you know i'm gonna be brutally honest here now living city sucks um, it is right down where I kind of had the read of it when I first picked up the, the Cities of Sigmar Battle Tome, 
Like, I don't get why this city is any good, and the only thing that was good about it was hidden paths into Strike and Melt Away with Stormcast Eternals units. Um, you know, Cities of Sigmar, I think, is going to continue to do well on the back of running over a thousand points of Stormcast units, um, or, you know, a Tempest Psy with an Ironclad and, you know, 20 um, Thunderers inside it. Or something, or not 20, 10 Thunderers. Um, Seraphon coalesced, um, subtracting one from the damage inflicted by each successful attack uh, that targets coalesced that has the Saurus, Croxagore, or Monster keyword. So just not everything in coalesced. It's not all of your units, it's just certain ones. Um, it helps a little bit, but that's definitely not the only problem in Seraphon. Um, you know, I, I think they hit the things that we expected. Um, you know, Stormcast, like their win rate is 49%, not because it's like an average army. No, it has a 49% win rate because it is the most drastically overrepresented army at GTs and a big number of the people playing that army are newer players that are picking up the golden boys and they don't know what they're doing and they're losing games and it's just dragging that statistic down. If you look at, you know, the four plus win rate, like Stormcast are like way up there. Cities of Sigmar, I mean, the rest of Cities of Sigmar is... I mean, probably in need of some buffs, to be totally honest. Um, but fixing this particular exploit in Living City, I, I think, like, that fixes Living City. It makes Living City what I, it, like, it, it makes it kind of crappy. Like, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I don't, I think after this change, you're just not going to see anyone playing Living City in a serious way anymore. Um, and Seraphon. Definitely not fixed. It helps, but not fixed. Um, moving right along to Chaos. Boom! Uh, Legion of the First Prince. Basically, we got uh, a bit of a, uh, a nerf to Bellacore in Legion of the First Prince. But I'm going to be honest. It, here is my real final hot take on Legion of the First Prince. This needs to go in the trash can. Like, this is an army that is an afterthought. It is in a supplemental book from the previous edition. It is not its own battle tome. It is drawing units out of four other battle tomes, which are, you know, internally balanced with each other. And I don't think a damn thought is given to how these things interact with Legion of the First Prince at all when they are making these new battle tomes. Like, it just needs to go away. I I don't like it's cute that it's there. I'm glad some people like it, but the the win rate that this has combined with you know like what the representation of it is at events, like people aren't playing this because it's fluffy. Like this is players that are like Johnny's that see all of the weird interactions you can get by putting all four the chaos gods demons together and what you can do with it um so yeah it, it, it this just shouldn't be there uh heat knights of slanesh sigvald blissbarb archers twin souls and pain bringers all brought down in points by about 20 percent each now did they hit things that needed to come down in points a lot and bring them down a lot in points? Yes, they did. They definitely did that thing. Um, Sigvald, I think, didn't even need to go down. I think 265 is pretty fair for how friggin' ridiculous Sigvald is. Um, but, you know, he went down 60 points anyway. And so I guess... The question is, like, does this fix Slanesh? Is this enough? Um, you know, I think with the new battle pack, 
Twin Souls and Painbringers are going to be a hell of a lot better. Um, so, you know, bringing them down to a more reasonable point, point so that they can, uh, you know, be taken, reinforced. They're, you know, potentially um, Galatian veterans if your general is a uh, Lord of Pain. So uh, definitely, you know, some interesting possibilities there. I mean, you know, on a personal note, I love the mortal side of Slanesh. I think the models are absolutely fantastic. Uh, seeing these points go down on all of these new mortal kits almost makes me think I want to pick up Slanesh um, and just basically run all mortals for the most part. Um, it would be a fun army to paint. Like, they're just cool models. Do I think that this fixes Slanesh being, like, the second worst win rate to bring it up to better than 45% win rate? I don't think it does that. Um, it's going to help, but, you know, it's not going to increase their, like, it, it's not going to increase their win rate by 50%, which is what we need to do to get Slanesh up into where it belongs. They need to win 50% more games than they currently are. Dropping four units 20% 20, 20 is not going to get you there. Um, Blades of Corn. I mean, in a nutshell, all they did was make your Blood Tithe abilities not drain your Blood Tithe pool to zero whenever you use an ability. I think this helps corn a lot and it probably like a lot more than we even realize. Like I gotta go talk to some corn players about exactly what this really looks like. Um, I haven't looked at the blood tithe tables in a while. So um, I have a feeling there's some things on there that, you know, we're not getting used because you just felt like you were wasting blood tithe every time you were using them because they were inexpensive ones that are going to get used a whole lot more now. And, um, you know, I, I think this definitely is good for corn and the new battle pack is really good for corn too. They've got a lot of units that are on 32 or 40 millimeter bases that now are going to be able to fight in two ranks and they are Galatian veterans and yada, 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 uh, corn, Definitely between this and the new battle pack, I think Corn's got some legs to definitely increase their win rate significantly. Are they going to be, you know, hitting podiums on a regular basis? I don't think so, but at least people can grab their corn and go have fun with this. So uh, on the chaos end of things, I think they hit what they needed to hit. Um, the only thing that, like... Uh, Slanesh needs a new book. Corn also really needs a new book, but I think this is enough to at least bring Corn into the middle of the pack. Um, in Legion of the First Prince, uh, I am going to plant my flag in the ground and say that it just needs to go away. Grand Alliance Death. We have two very minor changes. Um, none of these armies are overperforming. I'm not sure if any of these are even over 50% at this point. Uh, maybe Soul Blight's over 50%. Uh, Night Haunt just got a new book, so being, I think they're at 42% win rate, um, you know, that's definitely an old number at this point. Um, Ossiarch Bone Reapers definitely need a buff, and making Necropolis Stalkers an Immortus Guard conditional battle line, not getting you there. Um, they really, like, I think the thing that all of the OBR players uh, have been screaming for is more to do with their rel relentless discipline points. That's the thing that would actually fix the army right now. And, like, they need a new book. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Like, this was all done with, uh, you know, second edition rules in mind. Definitely not third edition. And... You know, they're struggling. Flesh Eater Quartz, um, their ward save now is no longer conditional to being near a hero. They just get a ward save of six up all the time. Does that 
fix Flesh Eater Quartz? I mean, I guess it helps. A 6-up ward save is kind of like an afterthought anyway. Um, it, it, I think Flesh Eater Quartz needs more than this because this new battle pack is not doing them any favors. Uh, you know, I think for OBR, you know, Necropolis Stalkers and Immortus Guard potentially being battle line, that will also make them Galatian Veterans. So, you know, maybe they're more playable. I mean, they're more of a War Scroll issue for both of those. Like, they're just not that great. Um, and their points are definitely too high for what they are. Um, and Nighthawk, we'll see with uh, what's going on with the new book. Finally, we get to Grand Alliance Destruction in the Orc War Clans for uh, your Cruel Boys. Your Hobgrots are now battle line uh, for each unit of Gut Rippers that you have. So one unit of Gut Rippers opens up one unit of Hobgrot battle line. Does it fix it? Uh, no. No. Um, Hobgrot's battle line all the time? That would have helped a lot more. Um, but I think Cruel Boys still have major problems, and it's, like, structural problems in the army. Like, And then uh, Grinning Blades, you know, your units aren't visible to enemy models that are more than 12 inches away from them. Like, okay, like, they have good protection against shooting, but, like, that's that's not the Cruel Boys' problem. Like, like, it's certainly not their only problem. Um, you know, I'm not sure this new, uh, uh, new battle pack is even going to do anything for them. Um, yeah, they've just got more problems than I know what to do with. Uh, Bone Splitters, their uh, Spirit of Gorkamorka battle trait uh, now gives you uh, two hits on um, hits of six with all of your friendly Bone Splitters units. Um, I mean, solid. Um, does, do, again, does this fix Bone Splitters? I mean, I think the new battle pack helps Bone Splitters a lot. Like, all of their dudes are idiots on 32 mil bases with one inch reach. So now they'll actually be able to fight in two ranks and a whole lot of their army is battle line. And so they just got Galatian veterans falling out everywhere. So I, I you know, I think bone splitters will do better. Um, they were already at a 47% win rate somehow. Um, I feel like that's, that's gotta be off. Like, there's something weird about that being a 47% win rate. It doesn't quite seem right. Uh, Gloomspite gets the absolute worst army in the game right now. They got several uh, big changes here. Um, their Light of the Bad Moon battle trait, um, your friendly Moon Clan rally on a 4-up instead of a 6-up. Um, for, uh, yeah, they, they rally on four up, but only when they're in the light of the bad moon, we'll get to that in a second. Um, bad moon is, you know, you know, bad rule, <laughs> bad battle trait. Um, it's so random, uh, but they helped it a little bit. Um, Trogoth Renewal, you add one to the save rolls for all of your Gloom Spike gets Trogoths while they're affected by the Light of the Bad Moon. So, I mean, it, like, our Bad Moon abilities are definitely getting better. Um, our Loon Shrine. Um, now your Gloom Spike gets are treated as being affected by the light of the bad moon whenever they are wholly within 12 inches of this terrain feature. So that helps. I'm not going to say that's bad. Um, the problem really is that 
number one, that terrain feature is big and takes up a lot of space. And in this new battle pack, a lot of your deployment zones are small. Um, the other big problem is it has to be deployed in your territory and you know, at least half of the battle plans in the new battle pack are like your, your territory is just your deployment zone. There's a big no man's land where, you know, like you can't just put your loon shrine out in the middle of a battlefield. It, there's some battle battle plans where you can do that, but you know it, it, the fact that it's kind of unreliable, like it, it's going to be tough. Um, I again, I think this helps. These things do not fix gets, not even close. Um, I mean, the fact that you're you're basically rolling the dice on are you going to be able to put your Loon Shrine in a good place on the battlefield to actually use this ability, um, that's tough. That makes it really, again, super random, just like the rest of this army is. Um, rallying on a 4-plus in the Light of the Bad Moon is really good, but the problem is you can't control the Light of the Bad Moon, and if you're on a battle plan where your territory is, you know, a tiny little spit of land, um, you know, your Loon Shrine's not going to help you. So, I think we need more. This doesn't fix Gits. They basically just need a new book. Hopefully they're getting one. I know there's a lot of folks that love gets. Um, I mean, I'm kind of glad those stupid gets are down at the bottom. It's not an army that I like. It doesn't do things that I think are fun. So <laughs> it's just not an army for me. Um, I think I'm still traumatized by when uh, Blight Kings had their exploding hits on a 6+, plus, and then I ran them into, like, netters and was minus one to hit, so my exploding hits went away, and so I just hate those stupid green bastards. So, uh, the, the final question of all of this, is it fixed? Did they fix Age of Sigmar with this battle scroll, with um, all of these changes? I mean, I think all of the changes are positive. They, I think were really successful at identifying where the problems are, both on the things that are overpowered and the things that are underpowered. And they've got their eyes on almost all of the right things that are a problem that they're not addressing right now. So overall, I think it's heading in a good direction. The last battle scroll we got, the hunt, didn't do what they wanted it to do. Um, so you can see they have completely ditched the hunt, not in here anymore. Um, and we're just back to Arata, basically. You know, we're not going to try and fix this through gerrymandering uh, how the game is scored. Um, we're just going to make changes to units and points and battle traits and, you know, all of those things. Um, you know, I, I think very few things in here have actually hit the mark on like, oh, it's fixed. Um, uh, Living City, 110% the correct thing to do, and it fixes the problem and that there won't be abusive Living City lists anymore. The downside is that is going to significantly drop the win rate of uh, Cities of Sigmar from being kind of middling. I think it's going to be a really struggling army now. You're not going to see it doing very well at all. Um, Stormcast... Um, some positive changes, um, 
I think not enough. Seraphon, definitely not enough. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, OBR and uh, Flesh Eater Quartz, like, barely a touch. Um, Corn, I think, you know, in concert with the changes in the next battle pack, like, I think that might actually make Corn like, uh, like, maybe a B tier army. That's maybe like the, out of the things that they're buffing, I think corn is probably the most improved. Um, I think, uh, you know, everything they did to destruction, I don't think is fixing anything. Uh, Legion of the first prince needs to go away. Slanesh needs a new book. Um, you know, I think the answer to a lot of these problems really is they need new books for these things. If you look at all of the books they've released since third edition launched, I mean, really, they've all been pretty good. Um, I think the only one that's really been like a real problem has been the Stormcast book um, in that you know, is slowly getting chipped away a little bit at a time. Um, you know, I think they're like at the same time, the uh, War Clans book launched at the same time with Stormcast. And, you know, a third of that book is really good. And the other two, like, sub armies i guess you could call them uh, you know both the cruel boys and the blown splitters are really struggling i think the new general's handbook the new uh battle pack in the general's handbook is going to probably do good things for bone splitters it doesn't help cruel boys um and iron jaws are going to continue to be solid and fun so uh is age of sigmar fixed eh, no I mean, there's still plenty of problems. Um, will this help narrow the gap? I mean, I think it's going to take a few armies and lift them up. Um, I don't think this is actually going to make Gitz move much at all. Um, Slanesh has potential to have a positive move here. Corn is probably the biggest winner. Um, you know, that's about it. You know, I think they're, the big changes we're going to see going forward are really related to how armies interact with this new general's handbook. And, and that is really going to be where everything lives and dies. Like, like, why are they deferring decision on Sons of Bayamat? Because it's the all monster army that is exiting you know monster battle pack into infantry battle pack and they're just going to do bad now like a bunch of like 60 idiot grots can go stand on an objective and be 180 and just like you know it like gargants can do a lot of damage but they still have to do 60 wounds to get rid of uh, you know 60 goblins so, um, yeah, and, and we'll see. We'll see. So that's all for now, guys. Feel free to drop your comments down below if there's anything I missed or you think I'm wrong or terrible. Um, and, of course, if you're going to go down there and, like, write a novel, like, I encourage you to just start up your own YouTube channel. Seriously. Um, somebody just wrote me, like, a novel the other day. And I was like, God damn. Like... First of all, TLDR, dude, like, I'm not reading this. Um, not to be that much of a dick, but I guess I kind of am that much of a dick. Um, but yeah, like, if you've got a lot to say, just go make a channel and say it. Like, don't go lurking YouTube comments. You know, make a response video. Get, get going on stuff. Contribute more to the community. We all want to hear what you have to say. Except me that just doesn't want to read comments because I'm lazy. Anyway, I'll talk to you all later. Ciao, babe.